We are officially recording. So welcome everyone to the virtual coffee break with Tanisha. Today we have a special guest. This young lady is a founding director with Planet Marketing. And that means she said yes before there was even any evidence that we were going to be this great organization that we are today. She is a five-star director. She wears the Rolex watch and the ruby ring signifying earnings of a quarter of a million dollars annually in residual income she is the number eight income earner out of over where are we at 57 58 out of a lot of people okay <laughs> i want to bring to the line my sister in success my diva miss jp Watkins. hello miss tanisha hello. burke can you hear me okay i can hear you loud and clear how are you doing i am amazing and you know i am a huge fan of yours uh i i absolutely love you i love your brother i love your husband um you know just go down the line but miss tanisha burke i what i remember most about when i met you is that you came into this industry um with little experience and I remember you just being a fireball, just blazing to the top and coming from where you came from to earn those six figures. You know, you just became, you just stole my heart because you were just always so humble. You were always a sponge. You've always been a champion. And you know that divas recognize divas and we recognize that champion within each of us. So my heart uh, just really beats for you and anything you need, you know, you got me. Oh, thank you so much. I just, I just, I love the fact that, you know, when I came into the in industry, uh, Director Watkins, and I saw you on stage at that first, first Women in Black um, at the convention in Atlanta in 2016, I was like, I like her. <laughs> I, I want to be her when I grow up. And so, <laughs> you know, you're definitely somebody that I've been following and I look up to and I definitely you know, appreciate that we can be on this journey together, helping a lot of people. So, um, can there, I have a lot of new people. We got 39 people on right now. Can you just share your story and, and how you got started in the business? And um, we have, I had everybody write down some questions that we're going to share in the chat um, that are shared in the chat. So we'll go into that after you share your story, but go ahead and tell everybody who is the infamous and famous JP Watkins. You know, um, I'm very humbled to be here today because my path could have been totally different. Um, we're in a pandemic right now, my sister. And I could be one of those individuals out of the 30 million people who have filed for unemployment. Um, I was one of those individuals that went to school, got my degree. I was in property management for 20 years. Um, I started off as a leasing agent. Then I became a manager. Then I was a you know marketing director. And I had the company card, the company credit card, and all that making 50 grand a year broke. So the degree did not equal, you know, necessarily time freedom or financial freedom. But here's the great thing about being exposed to the industry of network marketing. I got into the industry 11 years ago and I worked part time um, my network marketing while I was doing uh, my job. And I began to mumble under my voice. I don't want to be here anymore. I didn't say it to anyone, but you know how the universe conspires. Uh, somebody's going to work now. And guess what? Just be careful what you ask for. Because I walked into work 2014 and I was fired. But it was nothing, uh, Miss Tanisha Burt, but God moving that job out of the way because 9,000 lives were assigned to me through this project and I didn't even realize it. So it's so, so very important to understand that if you're here today, you are on assignment. Absolutely, I love it, I love it. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to just jump right into the questions. Um, Shelly? Shelly, you wanna come off? Yes, I'm here, I'm here. Hi, good afternoon, Director Watkins. Um, I, I love your presentation. I watch your presentation often. And um, one of my questions is, um, how, how long did it take you to actually master the presentation? Because of course, there's a lot of information for the presentation and you wanna be able, I mean, the way that you present it, I, like you can't take your eyes off of you. Okay? <laughs> you know, so. Um, how, how long did it take you? 
it's like riding a bike. You know, the more you do it, the better you get. And I have to be honest, when I was in college, I was in pageants. And uh, I had to have a speech coach and a speech therapist uh, because the way I was pronouncing certain words, it was totally not going to win me anything. And so I have to tell you that I took a special interest in learning how to speak and getting over the fear of speaking. And so, um, you know, and I love the way that you speak. You have a wonderful voice. So um, I, I had to work on those things. And if someone is afraid of speaking, there's nothing wrong with taking those classes. But more importantly, the more you do the presentation, it becomes second nature. I'm always amazed at people that come into this industry and the screen will freeze or the PowerPoint will shut down, or we'll go to a building and the, uh, and the electricity's off. And, and they'd be like, oh, I can't do it. I don't know what to do. And I'm thinking to myself, I can go slide by slide in my head because I've done it so many times that it's just, and I can just close my eyes and I see which slide is next. But that's because of repetition. So I just want to encourage you and anybody else that's listening, you, this is your moneymaker. The only thing we're here to do is build rapport, expose, and close. Peak interest, show the plan, and three-way call. That's the only thing we are here to do. So if we don't get the presentation down, we don't make no money. Mm, good, exactly. good, good. Thank you so much. Miss Tanay. Yes. You're up. So, um, hello, Miss Director. How are you? Good. Good. My question is, how do you, how did you deal with discouragement um, as you were building your team and coming up um, through this organization? Miss Tanay, can I ask a question? Are you new to the industry or have you been here a while? I'm new to the industry. I've been with um, Planet Marketing for a little over two months now. Excellent. Excellent. And I, and I'm glad you said you're new because, um, one of the things that I, if you were older in the industry, I would be, I would wonder because you should be diving in head first to that personal development. I went to college. I got that degree. I, I pledged Delta. I stepped, I did all that stuff. And nobody ever said, work on you. No one ever told me to read books about, you know, um, rich dad, poor dad, think and grow rich. No one ever talked about their mindset books like emotional intelligence and, you know, uh, the colors training that I do. Like no one ever talked to me about those things in college or formal education. So there's a whole different level, you know, uh, Miss Tanae, we'll, we'll go to uh, high school, we'll go to college for four years, we even go to graduate school. But over here, there is a certain level of education too. Like you still need to get your degree in network marketing, but it's not a formal degree. So I want to encourage you to start reading the basic books like my first year in network marketing. Like if you can just start with the basics, Eric Worre, GoPro. That book, it changed your life. And it begins to help you with the mindset. See, as you work on your mindset, everything is starting pulling off your back. Because they say it quick, because I got to go. So you begin to get that attitude. When you start reading those books, you just totally, all that stuff, roll off your back. Okay, thank you so much. Excellent, You're welcome. excellent. Matt. Good morning, good morning. All right, so one of the questions I've got, and I've got a lot of, uh, I've been running some Facebook ads and whatnot, and really getting a lot of response um, from international. Do you anticipate us growing and opening up more markets, Europe, South America, India, uh, anytime soon? What, what kind of forecast or you know, rubbing the crystal ball, what can we see on that? Yes, um, I will say that Canada's up next. Um, I have 3,000 on my team in the United Kingdom. And I can tell you, it is extremely hard uh, to build because when you build in another country, you cannot just sign them up. You have to, of course, marry the infrastructure of the nation. We're talking about their currencies. We're talking about working with their vendors. We're talking about working with their travel uh, entities. So there's so much involved in um, not just turning it on, but actually being on doing business. Um, so we're open now, as you know, in 22, 
Um, but here's what has happened, Matt, is that we haven't even monopolized on the countries we're in. You know, so what happens is if we don't even monopolize and maximize on the countries we're in, then it kind of makes the company have reservations about throwing money in areas that we're not even, so if we have leadership in those areas, they're more apt to open those countries. Um, so we, the UK market and Mexico market until people here had connections in Mexico, so we have support. So as people grow, uh, for example, someone from, uh, you recruit someone who is of Indian descent here, they go one star, two star, three star, they have an influence and they're able to go to that country, speak to the, the language, speak to the whoever, and we're able to have that liaison. Right. Then we're able to open more, but Canada is right around the corner from us. It's not that, that hard. We've been working through their government agencies but other than that it's just so hard um and andy cofton um you know really schooled me about how hard it is to open other countries um and how expensive and how we're underutilizing the countries we already have right right yeah i just it, it was curious because i've got a lot of contacts that are reaching out from jamaica and things like that and, and on the we're same ad we're, we're in jamaica from, yeah from jamaica but i can't get any contact out of the u.s yeah, it's, so it's it's really, it's been interesting watching that demographic and the reactions to them. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Tanya. Hi, Director uh, Watkins. How are you today? Excellent. That's good. That's good. You are my idol. Um, every time I see you, uh, and you speak in front of the audience, I get chills on, in my body. Oh. Um, how do you deal with the younger you, the pre, the right when Donald Bradley got in contact with you? How did you deal with male prospects that are on the fence about joining the business after they've had their three-way call? Okay, so you're saying, how do I recruit the men? Right, exactly. Well, let me just tell you, let me just be honest. Can I be honest? Yes. Uh, um, most men, uh, you know, it's women with emotions, it's males with ego. Uh -huh. So in order to really get a strong male, Philip Rollins is my second largest leg. Tiffany Rollins, Tiffany McIntosh is my first largest leg. And Philip Rollins is an alpha male. He's strong. He's dominant, all those things. Uh, but I had to be better. I had to run ahead of him. It's very hard to recruit men if you don't know that compensation plan, if your work ethic is not animal, because they're going to look up to you for leadership. And what are they, what are they, what are they following? So you got to make sure you have that confidence. Not, I'm not going toe to toe with a man like a man, because th that's not what they're looking for. They're just looking for that strength and that work ethic in you. Do you know what you're talking about? And will you outwork me? Or are you looking to recruit me so that you can lean on me, so that I build your team? Nobody wants to feel like you recruit them to lean on them. Most people, um, whether they're male or female, um, if they're strong, you got to give them a reason to sign up with you. So you got to really have that focus, that work ethic, that skill set, that knowledge, so that you can attract the people that you want to recruit. So you got to be that person, and then you recruit the person. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It makes plenty of sense. Thank you so much. And you can do it. And you can do it. Okay, yes, thank you. That was great. That was a great response. Maria. Good morning, Director Watkins. You're also one of my idols. And um, I see you as a very professional, but I also see you having fun a lot. So how do you avoid taking yourself too serious and remember to have fun with your process? You know, it's very hard because this is a very serious business, you know, um, we're in travel, but if you want to make six figures, you know, quarter of a million, half a million and a million, it's more intense. I mean, it really is. Um, but at the same time, you got to make sure that you don't stress yourself out, you know, and that's because once you stress yourself out, then you do lose yourself and you lose your confidence and you lose your zeal and you don't want to do that. 
So there are moments that I get massages, you know, I will get that massage or I'll go and, um, you know, listen to a song that gets me motivated. Sometimes it's gospel, sometimes it's rap. You know, sometimes it's, you know, depending upon my mood, you know, I wrote something on Facebook. I said, this morning I should have woke up with, uh, take me to the king, but I woke up with, um, uh, what did I say, Tanisha? I woke up thinking about little Kim and junior mafia. <laughs> you saw that, right? I was like, I, I should have been thinking about, you know, praise the Lord. And then I thought about junior mafia and little Kim. So, you know, it's sometimes you have to take your mind to a place of um, motivation and you got to get away from the, the routine and just take your mind. And for me, it's music. Music moves me. I, certain songs get me to relax and get in my space. So for some people, it's meditating. For some people, it's travel. What, you know, so whatever you need to do to kind of take that break, you got to pay attention to your body. You got to pay, pay attention to your mind because you don't want to burn yourself completely out. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, JP, I remember, I think it was either last year or the year before, and you went live and you said that you were turning the noise off. Yeah. And, and yeah. that stuck with me. So that was one yes. of those moments where you were like, okay, it's getting too loud. I need to turn the noise off and work on me. Yeah, and you do. And sometimes you have to go to a space that you don't, it's not just work, 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 work. Because especially if you're red, you go so hard in the paint that you do lose yourself. Now the blues, blues need to stop the party. You know, <laughs> the red, you know, but the blues, I tell you, those blues turn up, they turn up all the time. They do. Uh, Mildred. Um, good afternoon, Director Watkins and everyone. Hello. Um, my question is, how are you? My question is, what have the, what, we all have challenges, I'm sorry. We all have challenges in growing our business. So which one was the most challenging for you and how did you overcome it? Oh my goodness. Yeah, for me, it would have to be coachability uh, because I am a red personality. And we t and we we coming into the industry of network marketing. Most of us as adults, um, we've probably held position in our regular nine to five jobs. Many of us have degrees. Many of us are wives, husbands, bosses in our own right. And then you're telling me I have to come over here and take orders from someone. And so we have to learn to totally humble ourselves because even though we may have success in that arena, we don't have success in this arena. And so. I had to learn, you're, okay, you're not the stuff over here, Miss Thing. You got to listen to somebody. You got to humble yourself. And so the coachability, allowing someone to pour into me, allowing someone to guide me and trusting their, 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 their um, voice and not my own. Because, you know, in our mind, we think we got this, we know what to do, but that's not necessarily the case. We need to watch the success of other people especially if they're our coach and they've already accomplished it. And if they've accomplished it, we should listen. And I had to learn that. Okay. Thank you so much. Jessica Allen, our, our one-star director, Director Allen. Can you hear me? Sorry, the baby trying to go to sleep. <laughs> so I just wrote it in the chat. Um, let me go to my question. Um, so, Miss JP Watkins, how are you? I'm wondering. My question is, I know we all have to hit the re reset button, um, everybody in their business, but you as a five-star director, what does your activity look like? What does it look like for you when you hit the reset button? You know, just, you know, I know that mindset, but you know, your activities, any books that you read, it, you know what, we're talking about two to three presentations a day for me, um, if not more. And it's amazing the number of people on my team that do two to three presentations a week, if that. I have people that tell me I have a presentation scheduled this week and they want me to do a toe touch. They want me to be so proud. And I'm like, you're doing one presentation this week and you're talking about making six figures. So it's the, the work ethic you're absolutely right, Ms. Jessica. It is leveled up. We have to be showing this plan. We have to be PS3ing our buns off. 
if we want to make money in the industry of network marketing. We got to be doing the PS3 personally going wide, but also doing the presentation to build depth, you know, helping our team do the presentation. So it is definitely, yes, Matt said 10x. You're absolutely right. Like the work ethic has to be dialed up. And right now, because the pandemic, um, we're, we're all home. Many of us are quarantined. Um, I'm telling people, let's, let's turn the corner. You know, we're at home. Let's turn this thing up because there are people who are saying, well, travel is on hold and the travel industry is in jeopardy. And I'm like, no, there are so many people, as soon as they lift travel bans, the people who have cabin fever want to get out. We need to talk to the people who need those 30 million people who need a job. Those, those people who want to get out because they have cabin fever. This is the perfect platform for all those people who need something. We can fill those needs. So turning up the activity now is a perfect time to do that. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Lyric. This is our birthday girl today, Miss JP. Lyric, are you there? All right, let me read her question. Uh, her que she might have had to jump off. Her question was, what are some strategies you may use after the people go MIA? And also, how do you handle no responses? <laughs> Lyric, is Lyric on or she's I, not on? I think she jumped off, but I really liked her question. It was a good one. Okay, well, I wish that she was on so that we could honestly just tell her lyric, like, why would you want to drag a dead body? I'm sorry, if a dead body is dead, does anybody know how much dead weight weighs? Anybody ever tried to pick up somebody who's passed out? Like they fainted, they passed out. Can you imagine dragging a body that can't carry itself, Ms. Burke? So people have to understand that's the equivalent that you're asking. How do I motivate the dead? How do I re resurrect the dead? How do I motivate people who, you leave that body? Listen, the paramedics, it takes two of them to lift up a body. How are you expecting me to go lift? You, could you, <laughs> come on now. If you're not, if, if you don't want this, I can't force feed nothing. I'm trying to think of the best way to say it. I don't want nobody to be offended today. I want y'all to invite me back. <laughs> I don't want nobody to be like, Miss Watkins is, in I'm just telling you, all 11 years of experience, it is better to give birth than resurrect the dead. Yes. So leave those people alone and keep it moving. Absolutely. Miss Angel Ross. Hello? Yes. Good afternoon, Miss Watkins. <laughs> everyone that's on the panel. My question is, how do you handle prospects that keep saying that they're ready, but when you follow up with them, they keep saying, I want to do it, but I still have questions. You know, you have to use your better judgment um, in those situations because it's never emotional. It's never personal to you, but if you keep fooling around, people who keep making excuse time then you know I totally understand now me I'm at a point in my career where I don't have the time to keep going back and forth because I understand people out of their mouth say one thing and do another so I'm basing it on if you tell me hey I'm gonna sign up Friday and I call you Friday hey let's go ahead and get you started well and you give me one or two excuses really I'm moving on because I really don't have that kind of time so it's totally up to you to use your discretion how long you want to fool with a person in the beginning of my career i'm going to be honest i was kind of desperate um and i learned that in that i was wasting time with people um you gotta keep prospecting you know miss tanisha burke is one of the most amazing recruiters i've ever met in my career and i've met a lot of people i would get with her and and ask her because she's personally sponsored a lot of people I would take some notes and coaching from her because you just need to flip the deck. You know, there are four aces in that deck of cards and you got to keep flipping those cards to get to the aces. But many times we're stuck on that two of clubs. 
and we're stuck on that nothing. So you got to keep flipping the deck, keep going through the numbers and leave people alone. Don't you stick on those people because it'll keep you stagnant. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Miss Leah had to leave, but she wanted to ask the question, what are some of the little things that you do in your business that have found to make a big difference? The little things, counseling up with my upline, counseling, seeking wise counsel before I do things. And if you have an idea, you want to be a self-starter. You absolutely want to be a self-starter. But you're in business for yourself, not by yourself. If you have a business where your upline financially benefit from helping you, use them. I think that we're very underutilized. Would you agree with that, Ms. Burke? Absolutely. Could your phone ring more for coaching sessions? Could your, could your phone ring more for three-way calls? Yes. So people, what happens is they'll be like, ah, I got an idea. I'm going to do this, 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 and this. Then they mess it up. Then they call me. Will you help me clean up this mess? Well, why? I didn't tell you to get in the mess in the first place. You never even asked me, was that a good idea to go down to Walmart and fly your the parking lot? I never told you that was a good idea. So I think that if we seek wise counsel, if we ask our upline help, they've already been through it. They've already got the results. So they can give us guidance. Um, th that's probably the smallest thing is just, hey, I was thinking about doing this. This is my idea to go to Baton Rouge, to go launch this person. Do you think that's a good idea? Um, just seeking wise counsel. Excellent. Excellent. And reading more and reading more, reading, reading, reading more. That is huge. Shifting that mindset, shifting your mind. Excellent. Excellent. Samantha. Hello, Miss Director Watkins. How are you? I'm wonderful. Great, great. I just want to say anytime that I hear Miss Director Watkins coming to the line, whether it's the opportunity to meet Super Saturday or whatever, I got to call up my whole team. We got to break our neck and make sure we be in front of you. <laughs> so my question is to you is, are you going to write a book? <laughs> you know what? Thank you for that. Mr. Bradley has told us many times, make sure you get across the finish line before you stop to buy your own press. And so, you know, I, I want to thank you for the, the, the compliment and the, and the kind words. But I would like to see myself at a certain income level, which would be a million dollars in the industry first. Um, because right now, we haven't made any money yet. You know, right now, we are still in that beginning stages of six figures, quarter of a million, half a million. Um, in the industry of network marketing, the lowest of the income earners are at a, a 100000 a month. So in the big scheme of things, in the industry of network marketing, um, we haven't done anything. So it's important that we all keep our head down. We all, like I told Matt, we need to dominate, you know, our city, our state, um, our, our country. You know, we need to take this company from 50,000 to 100,000. And then after we all have really made it to those goals, then we can write some books. But we can't stop now. Love it. Love it. And Kat. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us, Director Watkins. How are you? Good. Good. Um, you touched a little bit on my question. I was wondering that um, as you go up in the ladder um, of success, uh, what type of management responsibilities do you have now as a five-star director versus a one or two-star director? You know, really, um, it's about being very organized with your time. Like, you know, I am not moving. I'm not making a move without looking at this planner and it's amazing to me the number of people that don't have a calendar and so um you know we have everything is scheduled the the peak you know after you peak someone you're always scheduling when you're going to show them something and when you're going to do those three-way calls you're scheduling those zooms you're scheduling the follow-up when they tell us no you know we're scheduling the follow-up um all of these things are scheduled but in terms of working with the team um you know I do schedule three-way calls with people, um, but I'm not scheduling my whole day, pumping up folks, 
-hmm. problem solving, listening to whining and complaining, listening to why they couldn't. I'm not scheduling my whole day with that. So if any of your day has to do with people calling you, whining, complaining, you need to X that off your calendar because you got to stay in that mode, which is like, my head is down. You got to have positivity around you at all times. You have to have movers and shakers around you at all times. This is about you personally recruiting. All right now, are you goal builder? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm, a bronze, I'm a bronze builder right now. So your number one goal is to get nine. And after you mm -hmm. get nine, then your number one goal is to do what? 2020. Director. 2020. 2020. Because okay. the formula for director is 2020 and three to four gold builders. Mm -hmm. So before you go director, you need 2020 yourself and you need three to four gold builders in your organization. And you can't drag nobody. Let's say you got three people who have their hand up saying, I want to go gold. Well, if they don't go gold, then you keep going to get more people. Miss mm -hmm. Tanisha Burke is a very prime example of going wide. Miss Burke, how many people have you personally recruited now? Probably 80 or so between mm -hmm. 70 to 80. So I will say this to um, uh, the young lady. What is her name? Ann Cat. Mm -hmm. Huh? Ann Cat. <laughs> Ann Cat. Mm -hmm. Ann Cat. Listen, we underestimate the price that it, that it takes for success. Mm -hmm. We underestimate the work ethic. We underestimate that $200 can t t take you to a million. $200. I went to school. I paid a hundred grand in student loans to make 50,000 when right. $200 is now paying me quarter of a million, right. 30 grand a month almost. Yes. So all I'm saying is you need to go crazy. Mm -hmm. You need to lose your mind mm -hmm. because the money is out there, but we just don't go after it aggressively enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. That was very, very helpful. Thank you. Andrew Burke. <laughs> my better half yes my <laughs> friend hey andrew hey miss jp how are you doing today i'm wonderful all right thank you for getting on the call first of all and speaking to the team and everything um my question is kind of like it's kind of piggybacking off of something that lyric said or lyric asked earlier and you already answered but it's more personal it's more leadership um has there ever been anyone in your organization okay they signed up and they absolutely show no movement, you know, they're not plugged in or anything. But what they're doing is like they're, they keep paying their business, you know, they keep paying their fee. And, but what they do, the only contact that they have with you is that they comment on your non-travel related posts and stuff like that all the time on Facebook and everything. Did you ever just look at the person's like, you know, have a hard, hardcore combo, combo with them and just say, you know, this, this business is not for you. What, what are you still doing in here? Have you, have you no. ever done that? Or what would you say on that? No. <laughs> like, you know, it gets to the point where you're a lion and, you know, some of the things that happen are, are like a gnat. If you think about the king of the jungle mm -hmm. and you think about that person who, um, you know, you're at that state of mind that you're, 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 you know, you don't have time to swat gnats. You know, you just don't have time to entertain um, things when you're on that run. You know, old people, my grandmother used to say a dog in the hunt doesn't realize he has fleas. And what that means is, you know, when a dog is running, you don't realize in, until he stops, he, he doesn't even scratch, you know. So what I'm saying is, like, your mind has to be so elevated that none of that even bothers you. You don't notice it. You don't acknowledge it. It's like, whatever, because you know, you're on to the next thing. Now, if somebody is being disrespectful in the group or they're saying something disrespectful, then you may need to address that because maybe the team sees something disrespectful and it's, and it's noticeable. You may have to remove someone from the group or you may have to address something. But other than that, you don't even acknowledge any of that. You are, you're the lion. You're not the net. There you go. Love it. Love it. Miss Beloy. Oh, she's driving. Let me. Hello. I one second to get in my car. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. I'm out and about taking care of business. Um, it's my turn to ask my question. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Oh, yep, it's good afternoon. 
Good afternoon, director. Thank you for attending our meeting. I think it's awesome. I too myself have heard your presentations and love them. Um, my question for you is work life and family balance. I work for corporate America and I do a lot of uh, meetings with the VPs or directors. So some days I don't get off when I'm supposed to. So my typical work day is like from six in the morning to four in the afternoon. But sometimes I may work till eight or nine. And it leaves me very little window time to attend to my 11 year old and um, focus on the business. How, yeah. what is your recommendation on work-life balance? How would you handle something like that? Well, you know, whatever you focus yeah. on expands, right? We all know that whatever, wherever your focus is, is where you reap most of the benefits. I'm trying to okay, you. so what you've got to do, what you've got to do is decide, you got to make a decision, um, how many hours you're going to work, what are the hours, what are the times. Once you make that decision, you're going to have to say, okay, I'm allotting this particular time to to work my business because what happens is if you just say well when i get a moment i work it you never get a moment <laughs> so you're gonna have to say it's, it's just like the gym you have to say i'm going to work out monday tuesday wednesday at 12 noon this is when and, or else we never do what we never work out if we don't if we don't find time so you have to be very intentional my dear because you're talking about you're a mother you are a corporate guru and a trout and, and, and a network, all, all of that, something's got to give. I mean, honestly, let me just say this to you. Keep your network marketing business um, on. Don't, don't turn it off, don't quit. But here's what you gotta understand. If you're gonna make some money, at some point, you're gonna have to focus on your network marketing business. So uh, Latoria Mayberry is somebody I want you to inbox, um, get to know she did quarter of a million dollars on the side and she was working full-time full-time mom as well but she just made a decision that it was just so important to her to go one two three star director but so you your priorities are what they are nobody can define that but you right now your job is your priority right your children all of these are priority and the only person that can make a decision is you how much time you will devote your business but you got to make a decision to devote some excellent excellent and i'm going to end with my question um you know at every level i found of directorship it's kind of like your role changes is like this new thing to learn um, it's different. You know, you can get to one star by yourself, but it's not until you're trying to get to two star that you're like, oh, duplication. Yeah, let me go back. Right. And then, you know, three stars is, is another B. So how do you manage a team? What is that lesson at, at the five star level? You got a team of over 9000 people. What does that look like? It's leaders. It's leaders. It's developing the leaders. It's learning how to focus on just three or four people at a time because you have so many people, right, that are pulling at you. But you're gonna have to figure out, and they're gonna have to be some auditions in your mind. And you're gonna have to say, okay, this is my Michael Jordan, this is my Scotty Pippen, right? This is my Dennis Rodman. And you're gonna have to identify that core three. And you're going to have to say, do I have what I need in order to go? Because I need three engines to get across this ocean. And if you don't have what you need, it's not that we're going to quit everybody on the team. It's that we're focused on three engines or four engines and pulling them and really making sure that you help them drive depth, helping them. Because you got to have, you got to have a minimum of two, two stars and one, one star to go to four. Idealistically, it'd be one, three star and two, two stars. So, I mean, that's some, those, those are some people bringing some heat because you need 500, 500, 500. And that's three-star legs of business or it's manufactured three-star under people. Mm -hmm. So you need it minimum, you know, one three-star leg, two two-star legs or three three-star legs in a perfect scenario. But that may not happen. 
but that means that you are recruiting with purpose. You are, you are the talent scout. You're going to the high schools, the college. Who, who's the next rookie that I can get on? You know how they do. Mm -hmm. So you now, you got to recruit with purpose. Who can come get, it's like right now in my network marketing career, I need people that can bring a hundred. I can't take babies from infancy. I'm a grandma in the industry. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to give birth to the very basic. I need some people that have base that can come in here and say, I can at least bring nine people and I can work on getting a hundred people. I don't want to have a battle about you going gold. I need a, I need somebody who can say, well, I at least see one star. I need somebody who's like you. I need to make six figures. What do I need to do? So I'm looking for those people, those conversations, because if you don't work with that caliber of mindset and those people, you can't get the four. Right. Right. Excellent. This has been phenomenal as usual. I just love when you pour into uh, my organization and I want to thank you so much. I'm going to allow you yield the floor to you to close this out, JP. You know, I'm going to go back to something I said earlier. We have, we are really at the best place on the planet. $200 can change your life if you work it. If we put the sweat equity and the focus behind this $200 investment, Ms. Burr, people like Shedra White, who's now making over $90,000 a month, why can't we? You see people coming from basements, being grabbed, you know, people like me who corporate America threw to the side and you know, going from repo to Range Rover. I mean, we can have anything we want. And right now I'm working on that half a million dollars. And the only person that's stopping me is me. So I want everybody on the line to just see it bigger, faster and put the work in and go after it. Do not hold back. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You go for that goal right now. Go for it. Everybody put in the chat. I'm going to go for it because I want to see you guys shout that out and say that, go for it. I'm going to go for it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Um, looking forward to seeing you at convention. Uh, are you at the Planet Escape? I am at the Planet Escape. I will see you in July on the beach. Okay. Love you. <laughs> love you too. Thanks, everyone. I am going to go for it. Let's go. Thank you, team. And I will see you all on Monday for virtual yes. break with I want to watch the recording. Yes, I will post the recording uh, in our chat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. Thanks, Tanisha. Thank you.